So um, today I'm going to um, speak about the integral coefficient geometric stack equivalence in mixed characteristic. Um, so the plan of the talk um, is to um, first look at some background that is the um, classical stochastic isomorphism for um, CID groups. And we go to the motivation of the geometric stack equivalence. And we will introduce um, the main player um, of the game, that is the weight vector of Grassmannian, and the Sataki category, which is a, a category of certain sheaves on um, um, Alfang Grassmannian. And we will state the geometric Sataki equivalence in the current setting. And if uh, time permits, I will um, very briefly discuss an arithmetic application of um, the geometric Sataki equivalence in the current setting. So um, let's look at um, the classical static isomorphism. Um, so we fix um, some notations in this section. So we will assume F to be a non-Archimedean local field. And as usual, um, we write O for its ring of integers and K equals FQ for its residue field. Um, so we can think of F as either a fan extension of QP or um, the ring of uh, Laurent power series FQ um, double parenthesis var pi. So in the former case, we call F is of uh, mixed characteristic. Well, in the later case, we say F is of uh, uh, equal characteristic case. So um, um, the names are justified by looking at the characteristics of these two local fields um, and compare them with the characteristics of their residue fields. So to make my life easier, I will assume G to be a split connected reduct reductive group scheme over the ring of integers O. And um, we fix the choice of the Borel subgroup and the maximal torus um, inside G. We will write X a lower bullet and X upper bullet for the group of co-characters and the characters of G. Um, as usual, we will write the W for a value group of T and X lower bullet upper plus for um, the summing group of dominant co-characters. Okay. So we can endow a topology on GLFF to make it into a locally compact topological group. Then under this topology, the subgroup K, um, which is defined to be GFO, becomes a maximal compact subgroup of GLFF. Then we can choose the unique power measure such that the volume of K equals to one. So now we are um, ready to do some harmonic analysis on the group. So we define the spherical happy algebra of G to be the set of uh, Z valued compactly supported functions on the double quotient space, K quotient, G quotient, K. So this is a very important object in the study of representation theory and number theory. Um, so the following results are well known. So the convolution of functions equip the spherical Hecke algebra with an algebra structure. And if we further apply the Gelfand trick, we can show this is in fact a uh, commutative algebra. And um, the Carton decomposition theorem tells us that the spherical Hecke algebra um, admits a set of uh, Z bases, um, which is labeled by the semi group of uh, dominant co characters of G. So these bases are the characteristic functions supported on K, G, K. So, on the other hand, um, we look at the Lanans dual group. So, assume E to be an algebraically closed field. Then we define the Lanans dual group G hat over E of the reductive group scheme G um, that we start with to be this unique reductive group over E, which is determined by um, the dual root data. So the uniqueness of G hat over E is um, up to isomorphism. Um, so here um, we give a list of uh, examples. So for example, G is GLN, then it's dual is again GLN. Um, if G is the special linear group SLN, then it's dual is PGLN. If G is a special orthogonal group, SL2 and plus one is dual is a uh, symplectic group, SP2N. And if G equals to um, SL2 and or E8, then it equals to is dual. Okay. So um, from this very definition, we see that the Lanans dual group, um, G hat over E, is really defined in um, by a combinatorial um, approach. 
Um, but later, um, when we discuss the geometry stock equivalence, we see um, the lens do group G hat um, can, be, um, can be produced via um, a geometric approach. Okay. So maybe two more notations. We write wrap E G hat for the category of uh, finite dimensional G hat representations over E and RG hat for the um, gross and decay ring of this representation category. Then the classical Satake isomorphism tells us that there is an algebra isomorphism between the spherical Hake algebra and uh, the gross decay ring RG hat. Okay. Um, so the motivation of the geometric Satake equivalence is to categorify the classical Satake isomorphism. Um, so um, um, categorification is a really um, innovative and a very important idea in many areas of mathematics. Um, so here, just to elaborate the idea, I will give like a very um, um, rough idea of what this means. This basically means that we hope to find um, two monoidal categories A and B and an equivalence of monoidal categories, which we denote by SATG from A to B, such that if we take the gross decay ring of both categories, we recover um, the original classical um, Satake isomorphism. So in other words, we are trying to upgrade the classical isomorphism to um, an, an equivalence of uh, symmetric monoidal categories. So um, it is very clear um, the category B should just be wrap G hat. This is pretty clear from the definition of RG hat. So we have basically solved half of the problem. Um, then the remaining half of the problem is what is this category A? And it turns out that this is a very hard question. So the rough idea of constructing this category A is um, as follows. So first of all, we look at a single um, quotient space, this GF quotient GFO, and we try to endow it with an algebra geometric structure. And this, in fact, gives us um, GER G, the affine correspondent, um, which we will discuss later. And recall that uh, we need to also inc uh, encode another copy of uh, GFO uh, quotient. Um, and this is, um, done by um, considering this GO equivariant perverse sheaves on um, affine Grassmannian. And uh, um, we end up producing the category of uh, GO equivariant perverse sheaves on affine Grassmannian. That is, uh, uh, this category is also called the Satake category. And this idea is really inspired by Gerasonic shift function dictionary. So um, maybe let's um, look at a naive att uh, attempt of um, endow this quotient space GF quotient GFO with an algebra geometry structure. Um, so we look at the case G equals to GLN and field F equals to QP. So by saying uh, lambda inside um, F of N is a lattice, I really mean lambda is a finally generated projective O module um, together with an isomorphism, lambda tensor O, uh, tensor F over O is isomorphic to F N. And we, we, give, we give O of N um, a name, lambda zero, and we call it the standard lattice. Then this quotient space G quotient K can be identified with a set of lattices inside of F N um, by sending the coset G K to um, G times the standard lattice lambda zero. So we notice that, pardon me. Okay. Um, so we notice that uh, the standard lattice uh, lambda zero is preserved by this subgroup K. So this is really um, a well-defined uh, map. Okay. So now um, we consider W to be the diagonal matrix whose first i diagonal um, entries to be one and the remaining n minus n i diagonal entries to be zero. And we view it as a dominant co-character of G. Um, then recall this Cartan decomposition uh, theorem gives us uh, the set of Z bases of the spherical Hecke algebra. 
we know it is meaningful to look at a quotient space k var pi wi k quotient k. So here, um, var pi of wi denotes the image of uh, wi inside G. And this quotient space um, can be identified with a set of lattices lambda um, that is bounded um, above by O of n and below by var pi times n. And such that the, the length of the quotient um, O n quotient lambda equals to i. And um, uh, just from some basic algebra, we can see this is there is a uh, canonical bijection between this quotient space and the set of uh, k points of the corresponding variety GER n minus i n. So we chart n minus i planes in a phase and dimensional space. Okay. So um, now let's talk about uh, alpha Grassmannian. So um, we slightly change some um, um, the setups uh, from last section. Um, so here we fix an algebraically closed field um, K of a characteristic P greater than zero. And from now on, um, the ring R will always be a perfect K algebra. So recall um, a perfect K algebra um, is such that is, is a ring R um, such that the forbidden um, gives uh, a bijection on the ring. And uh, we write a W of R for um, the ring of uh, weight factors. So F will denote a totally ramified finite extension of the W of K and O denotes um, its ring of integers. So we choose our pi in O um, to be a uniformizer and G um, will be a split connected reductive group over O and the lambda will be either ZL or FL. Um, it will be the coefficient ring of the category of sheaves considered later. And here L is a prime that is a different from T. Uh, we need to introduce a few more notations. So um, we assume H to be an affine group scheme of a finite type um, defined over the ring of integers O. We will write a W O N of R to be W of R considered with O quotient bar pi to the power of N um, over W of K. And the W O of R will be the inverse limit of W O N of R. We define D of R to be the spec of W O N of R. And uh, we consider it as the mixed characteristic version of the formal unit disk. And we write D R cross to be the spec of uh, W O of R um, one over of bar pi. So this will be considered as the mixed characteristic version of the punctured formal unit disk. Okay. So, um, then we can define the piadic jet group of H to be the pre sheaf over the category, over the category of perfect K algebras, such that it sends a perfect K algebra R to the WOR points of H. And we can define this piadic loop group of H to be the pre sheaf over the same category, um, which sends a perfect K algebra R to the WOR one over the pi points of H. So now we can define our central geometric object um, that is the weight vector of Grassmannian. So there are um, two equivalence um, ways of defining it. So first of all, we can view it as the FPQC quotient of LG and uh, L plus G. And alternatively, we can think of it as um, the moduli problem um, which sends each, which assigns um, to each perfect K algebra R, the set of isomorphism classes of, <clears throat> of pairs E and phi. So where E is a G twister over the um, Fermat unit disk D of R, and uh, um, phi is an isomorphism between E and the trivial G twister E zero when we restrict both twisters to the formal puncture unit disk. So sometimes it causes phi a modification of G twisters. Um, so by the above two equivalent, equivalent uh, definitions, it is very um, natural to ask a question, um, whether G is representable by um, nice geometric objects. So um, 
In the equal characteristic case, this is already very non-trivial. Well, in mixed characteristics, this turns out to be um, an open problem for a long time. So the very first results towards um, answering this question was proved by Xin Wen Zhu. He actually proved that per G is represented by an inductive limit of nice algebraic spaces. And this final answer was due to a celebrated theorem of Bart and Trosse, who proved that um, the weight vector of Grassmann per G is represented by an inductive limit of a perfection of projective varieties of FP. Um, so here we may actually ignore the word perfection for a moment um, because for projective variety, um, um, its eta topos is equivalent to the eta topos on the perfection of this projective variety because we will consider the shift, shift theory on uh, fungus many later. So the perfection doesn't actually make a lot of uh, difference. So uh, we can ignore the word for the moment. <coughs> Um, if you look at the definition of uh, weight vector alpha grass manion, we can see it is definitely not of a uh, finite type. In fact, it's infinite uh, dimensional space. It's really huge. Um, but but uh, the good news is it emits uh, very nice building blocks, and we will discuss this um, nice building blocks. So um, let's say we are given um, beta, which is a modification of two G twisters, E1 and E2. And um, we choose as a morphism phi i um, between the g twister e i and the trivial g twister e zero. Then our choice of beta and phi i produces us with a modification uh, of phi two beta phi one inverse of the trivial g twister. And again, by the Cartan decomposition theorem, we can identify this modification with an element in the dominant co characters of g. So we denote the dominant co-character arises from um, arises from this procedure by unit of beta, and we call it the relative position of um, of e beta. Okay. So the building blocks are defined in the following way. So let's say uh, we are given a dominant co-character mu. We can define the Schubert cell given mu as the set of pairs E5 whose relative position equals precisely to mu. And we can also define the Schubert variety that are less than or equal to mu um, as a set of pairs E5 whose relative position is less than or equal to mu. So I mentioned that these building blocks are nice and I summarized some of its good geometric properties in this lemma. Let mu and nu be two dominant co-characters. Then the Schubert variety girl less than or equal to mu is in fact a perfection of the projective variety defined over k. And the positive jet group L plus G acts on um, the Schubert variety through a finite type quotient. And we have an inclusion relation between girl mu and girl nu if and only if mu is less than or equal to mu. And furthermore, we know the stylistic closure of uh, girl mu equals to the Schubert variety of girl less than or equal to mu. And this Schubert variety equals to the union of all the Schubert cell whose relative position is less than or equal to mu. Okay. Um, so I think it's um, um, helpful to look at some concrete examples of Schubert cells and the Schubert varieties. So let's start by looking at a case G equals to GLN and a WI um, to be the dominant co-character we considered a few slides before. So in this case, an element E beta in the Schubert variety group WI of R can be identified with a WOR lattice. Um, so very similar to the previous definition, this means that um, lambda is really a finitely generated um, projective um, WOR module and we have an isomorphism between lambda tensor with W O R over over pi over W O of R um, with uh, um, W O of R over pi to the power of n. So in this case, the relative position uh, of beta um, equals to W I if and only if um, this beta can be extended to a general map um, 
from lambda to um, lambda zero. And uh, furthermore, um, var pi lambda zero is contained in lambda. And finally, the length of uh, lambda zero quotient lambda equals to i. So we see in this case, the Schubert variety GER WI is isomorphic to the um, Grassmannian variety GER MSI in. And this really agrees with our previous expectation. So I should mention that in this case, as you may have noticed, WI is minuscule co-character. So the uh, so the Schubert variety GER WI is, uh, is in fact a, a Schubert cell. And in this case, okay, and uh, uh, we will look at another uh, slightly more complicated, complicated example. So let's look at a non-minuscule um, case. So we assume G to be GL2 and mu to be the dominant co-character to zero. And by the previous lattice interpretation of Schubert varieties, we know that uh, the Schubert variety GER less than or equal to mu R is um, the set of uh, um, lattices lambda two sitting inside the standard lattice lambda zero, such that um, the length of the quotient uh, lambda zero quotient lambda two equals precisely to two. And it's not uh, very easy to directly study the geometry of, um, of this Schubert variety. Um, an idea of uh, studying it is actually by inserting a third lattice between lambda two and lambda zero. So we look at the space GER um, less than or equal to mu tilde. Uh, this is the set of chains um, of lattices lambda two inside lambda one inside lambda zero, such that the two successive quotients both have um, length one. And um, if we were to choose a sub lattice lambda one inside lambda zero, such that a quotient lambda zero quotient lambda one equals to one, we in fact have a P1 choice of a lambda one. And let, let's say we fix this lambda one and we choose a sub lattice lambda two, such that the length of a lambda one quotient lambda two equals to one. This gives us another P1 choice of lambda two. So um, we can see this um, girl less than or equal to mu two is really a P1 bundle or a P1. And by some algebraic geometry, we can see that um, this is in fact the Hesebrook surface sigma two, which is the projectivization of OP1 um, direct sum with uh, OP1 minus two. Um, so um, sometimes this um, resolution is called uh, the de Mazur resolution of the Schubert varieties. And this plays a very important role in um, um, Bath and Schwartz's proof of the projectivity of uh, um, with vector of angles many. So uh, let me draw a picture of it. So the Hesebrook surface um, roughly looks like this. So I'm drawing with my mouse. It's not a nice picture. So this is our resolution and it projects to our Schubert variety. So here's a singular point. Uh, this is GER 1, 1. Well, the rest is GER um, 2, 0. And we see that this projection is an isomorphism away from uh, this singular point. And in fact, its pre-image is the unique minus 2 curve um, in this um, Hesebrook surface. Okay. This is for... So I hope this picture makes um, makes the sure right here less than or equal to a uh, less than or equal to two zero um, more concrete. Okay. Oops. Uh... Okay, so we have uh, briefly discussed the geometric object of a width vector of Angras Mannion, and we are now ready to discuss the shift theory on it. So recall in the previous lemma, we, we mentioned that the positive, the, the formal jet group L plus G acts on the Schubert variety girl less than or equal to mu via a finite type quotient. So we can um, define the category of L plus G equivalent perverse shifts in lambda coefficient on this 
um, super variety girl less than or equal to um, mu. So we can define the category of lambda coefficient L plus G equivariant perverse shift on the entire upper Grassmannian to be the inductive limit of the equivariant perverse shifts on um, super varieties. And we will call this category, uh, this target category, and we write it as a set G lambda for simplicity. Um, by this very definition, we can see that the Sataki category is a priori an abelian category, but we actually expect a monoidal structure on it because recall um, this category is supposed to categorify the spherical Hecke algebra. And the monoidal structure is actually um, constructed via Luchtig's convolution construction, and I will um, sketch this const construction. So we first look at um, the space, which is called the convolution Grassmannian, um, GERG2 times GERG. So we also have two um, equivalent ways of defining it. So first of all, we can consider it as, a, as the FEQC quotient, LG um, times GERG quotient by L plus G. So here L plus G acts on LG and GERG anti-diagonal. So alternatively, we can think of the following uh, modular interpretation. So the convolution Grassmannian can be seen as the set of uh, isomorphism classes of quadruples E1, beta 1, E2, beta 2, such that E1 and E2 are two G twisters over um, the former unit disk, and the beta 2 is a modification between E2 and E1, and beta 1 is a modification between E1 and the trivial G twister E0. Um, so there is a very important map that is the convolution morphism from the convol convolution of Grassmannian to um, of Grassmannian. So um, if you think of the convolution Grassmannian as a quotient space, then this is defined as um, multiplying um, G1 and G2. And if you, if you think of it as um, a multi, if you, if you think of a convolution Grassmannian using the modular interpretation, then the convolution morphism sends this quadruple to E2 and the beta one uh, uh, composed with beta two. So a very good property of this convolution morphism in the mixed characteristic was proved by Zhu. Um, that is this convolution morphism is uh, stratified semi-small morphism. So in the um, equal characteristic case, I think this is proved by uh, Merkowitz and Villeneuve. So we are ready to um, define the monoidal structure. So let's consider this diagram. So, we've, um, so um, we have two natural projection maps um, from LG times GERG to um, GERG times GERG and the convolution Grassmannian GERG um, tilde times GERG. And the M is just the convolution morphism we, st uh, we um, defined before. So um, let's say A1 and A2 be two um, objects in the Sataki category. Um, so we can first produce the external tensor product A1 box tensor with A2 on GERG um, times GERG. And um, there exists a unique um, A1 to the box tensor A2, which is a L plus G times L plus G equivalent perverse sheaf on the convolution Grassmannian, such that if you pull back this sheaf along the projection Q um, is isomorphic to um, the pullback of the zeros um, perverse cohomology of A1 box tensor with A2 along the projection P. And um, the A1 con uh, convolve with um, A2 is defined to be um, the straight push forward of uh, A1 to the box tensor with A2. So recall that this M is a stratified semi-small, we see that um, this convolution is really a perverse sheaf. Okay. <clears throat> so now um, we have um, two monoidal categories. So um, one is the Sataki category, the other one is the category of uh, finally generated G modules over lambda. And, um, um, we expect th them to be um, equivalents as uh, uh, monoidal categories. And I proved that this is indeed the case. Um, so before going forward, let me make some very brief historical remark. Um, so the Jambach's tax equivalence um, 
um, was pr first proved in the um, eco characteristic eco setting. So this is um, done by the works of uh, Lustig, um, Ginsburg, Bellins, and Junfeld, and Markovich, Bologna. And in the mixed characteristic case, the first um, progress was made by Zhu, um, who considered G to be as connected split reductive group scheme over the ring of integers of a mixed characteristic field. And the coefficient ring of the shift category he considered um, was QL bar. So in our current setting, um, Schwarzer also announced a geometry stack equivalence for integral coefficients um, using his beautiful theory of diamonds. So with this theory of diamonds, he could produce a mixed characteristic analog of um, some very beautiful geometric objects, so-called the Billings and Grunfeld Grassmannian. So recall the moduli interpretation of the Vita factor of a Grassmannian we introduced before, we consider torsors over a formal unit disk. Well, Billings and Grunfeld Grassmannian is really, we consider torsors over product of certain copies of some global curves. And it, is, it turns out to be a very useful object in studying the uh, equal characteristic of an Grassmannian. Um, so what are the difficulties working in mixed characteristic setting and with integral coefic coefficient sh um, shifts? Um, so the first difficulty is, as I have already explained, that we don't have uh, a mixed characteristic analog of this Venice and Trinfa Grossmannians without using Schwarzschild's theory. And this is in fact a huge abstraction. The second thing is um, if we consider this the integral coefficient is a category, and it is not semi-simple. So we cannot restrict our attention to just the simple objects like the intersection cohomology shifts. And uh, I think it's generally pretty hard. I mean, I think it's pretty hard to study a general object in a stochastic category. And finally, um, if you take a general object in a stochastic category, its cohomology will have Portions. And it's just in general very hard to deal with torsion objects. Um, so I will very briefly outline um, the proof of this theorem. So it can be divided into three steps. So the first step is we look at a hypercohomology functor from the Sahaki category to the category of a finitely generated lambda modules. So I prove this factor is exact, faithful, and monoidal. So the exactness and faithfulness is, are not hard to prove. The real problem is how to show the monoidal structure. Um, in the equal characteristic case, the monoidal structure um, can be um, proved by using um, the Willis and Drinfeld Grassmannian. Um, well, um, in this current setting, I consider some GM action on a convolution Grassmannian. And we, we know what are the attracting, repelling, and the stable loci of this GM action. Then I can use the hyperbolic localization and the uh, mixed characteristic version of the Merkovich Bologna theory to split the global hypercohomology function. Um, and I do some manipulations to, um, um, to construct a, um, the monoidal structure of this hypercohomology function. And the second step is a generalized Tanakian formalism. So by the very nice properties of the hypercohomology functors H star, um, we, can, we can actually um, further prove that this H star restricts to a sub, full subcategory, um, for example, the uh, equivariant perverse sheaves on some Schubert varieties that are less than or equal to mu, this functor becomes uh, representable by some projective objects in the Sataki category. And by studying these projective generators, uh, we can produce a commutative hop for algebra with an antipode, which we call B lambda. Um, then the, the general Tanaki formalism tells us that we, can, uh, we have an equivalence of monoidal categories between the Sataki category and the category of this, um, um, uh, of modules of this affine um, group schemes back of a B lambda. And finally, we identify um, this affine group scheme um, back of B lambda with the Lorentz dual group um, with J hat of lambda. Okay. So, um, what does the geometric stack equivalence really tell us? Um, 
So I can summarize um, some of the properties um, in this slide. So basically I consider it as a dictionary between the topological information and the algebraic information. Um, so the following results hold in both um, equal and mixed characteristic case. So if the sheaves um, we consider are over a field, then the IC sheaves um, on Schubert varieties corresponds to the highest, uh, correspond to the re irreducible representations of the Lanus dual group um, of highest weight uh, mu. And um, these standard sheaves that are the um, perverse star push forward and the perverse shriek push forward of the constant sheaves um, sitting on the Schubert cell, um, shifted by the dimension of the Schubert cell, corresponds to the shorter module and the valve module respectively. And if you look at the new, a new weight space of the shorter module and the valve module, um, <clears throat> S mu and the W mu, they have a nice uh, canonical basis, which are um, the, the irreducible components of the super variety through length circle to, to mu intersect with some infinite dimensional space. Um, this is um, um, usually called a semi-infinite orbits as of new. Um, and this basis is um, called, sometimes called uh, the MV basis. Um, so I hope to use the remaining time um, to very briefly discuss some arithmetic um, application of this integral coefficient geometry stack equivalence. So again, I need to fix a few um, notations. So let's say G1, X1, G2, X2 um, are two Hodge type Shimura data and a mu i uh, is the conjugacy class of the Hodge co-characters determined by Xi. And EI is the reflex field of the Shimura data G and Xi. And we assume Ki um, be a sufficiently um, small open compact subgroup of GI of A of F. So um, we assume there is an isomorphism between G1 AF and G2 AF, and um, we have an inner twist from A1 to A2. And finally, um, we assume K1P is hyperspecial. So um, these assumptions may seem to be um, very technical, but roughly speaking, these assumptions basically allow us um, to identify. Uh, so first of all, they, um, they ensure that um, for GIQP um, have an integral model, the underlying GI over ZP. And moreover, these two integral models, the underlying G1 and underlying G2 are isomorphic to each other. And this allows us to identify their Lanus dual group, and we will write it as G hat. Um, again, for technical reason, we need to fix an isomorphism between C and QP bar, and we write a sigma for the arithmetic forbidden morphism of FP. Um, I will write a VI for the reducible representation of G hat over QL of uh, highest weight mu i, uh, just for simplicity. And um, I also need to choose a place new uh, lying above P um, in the composite term of, to reflex, uh, uh, of the reflex fields E1 and E2. So by the work of Vasu and Kissin, the Hodge type Schumer variety has canonical um, smooth integral model. And we will write um, SH mu i for the mod P fiber of this canonical um, integral model. And we base change it to K nu bar. And finally, I will write H upper P for the prime to P Hacker algebra. Um, <clears throat> I need to introduce this category of coherent sheaves. So first of all, um, we think of this G, uh, we, um, we think of G hat sigma as um, the coset in the G hat semi-direct product with uh, the arithmetic for Binis sigma. And we denote by this um, G hat sigma quotient G hat, the stack of uh, our Rami Fedelanas parameters over QL. And this, shift, this category of coherent sheaves uh, um, can be um, so this, this coh g hat g hat sigma can be, uh, is, is defined to be the abelian category of uh, coherent sheaves on this stack of uh, Lanus parameters. And if I write j for the global section of the structure sheaf on this, uh, on this quotient. Um, all right. Um, 
So um, the, the, the main theorem, which is um, a geometric Jack Lanas transfer for automorphic forms of uh, um, higher ways is as follows. So um, we can produce some l adic eta local system on this mod p fiber of the house type Schumer variety um, from some given representation w of uh, g. And we write uh, this uh, local system as l1 and l2. Under some technical assumption, um, we can produce a map from the home space of two coherent sheaves v1 tude and v2 tude on the quotient stack j hat sigma quotient j hat to the home space of two HP tensor J modules, which are the compactly supported cohomology of the spatial fiber of the um, um, Hodge type Schumer variety with coefficient in L1 and L2. Um, this map is compatible with the compositions in the source and target. Um, so the composition in the source is pretty clear. Well, the composition in the target um, requires some discussion. So um, um, in fact, um, we can think of this um, home space of this HP tensor J modules as the space of the cohomological correspondences. And the composition are really the composition of the cohomological correspondences. I will, I will give a brief discussion of the cohomology, um, cohomological discussion uh, in the later slide. And this map satisfies a very interesting property. So if um, both Schumer varieties are in fact the same Schumer set, then this action of the endomorphism ring of uh, V mu tilt on um, the compactly supported cohomology of the Schumer set in QL coefficient um, will coincide with the usual um, Heike algebra action under this Heike isomorphism. So this is uh, this can be seen as a particular case of the is equals to T theorem. Um, so um, this result just generalizes a previous construction of uh, <coughs> Xiao and Zhu. So they, in their case, they consider this uh, G hat over QL bar and the local system Li on the spectral fiber is taken to be the constant shift up to um, a shift of dimension and a, and a tape twist. And you may, uh, you may have noticed, so this result is really about QL shifts, but the integral coefficient geometry, geometry stack equivalence is um, really required. Um, so I will very briefly introduce some of the ingredients of uh, understanding this theorem and uh, some ideas um, of proving it. <clears throat> so the first geometric object we will need to use is the local hacker stack. So let's say we fix two sequences of uh, let's say we choose two sequences of uh, dominant co-characters of G. Then the local hacker stack, um, HK mu dot local R, classifies the chains <coughs> of modifications um, of N plus one G twisters over the former unit disk. And we require that each modification, so these modifications are bounded by, the, by our choice of the sequence of dominant co-characters. Okay. So, um, we can see that if n equals to one um, and e zero equals to the trivial G twister e upper zero, then this is just the upper gross manual we introduced before. Um, so we can also produce some um, um, some um, some stack um, HK um, mu dot vertical line nu dot zero log, which classifies the rectangles of modifications. So the, um, the upper row can be seen as a point in hacker mu dot. Well, the, the bottom edge can be seen as a, an R point in hacker nu dot. And this stack may be viewed as the hacker correspondence of uh, uh, local hacker stacks. And um, um, by the definition, we see that both stacks are not of finite types and we can't just directly define um, our attic sheaves on it. And um, um, these problems can be resolved by um, looking at some type, finite type quotients. And uh, this is the construction is uh, a little bit technical and I will just um, omit the um, rigorous construction. Okay. So the second geometric object we will need to use is um, the moduli of local Stuka. So as before, we also 
choose two dump sequences of dominant co-characters of G. Then this moduli of local Stuka is not really um, different from, it's, it's not extremely different from the local Hecker stack. So it classifies um, the sequences of modifications of G twisters. So we see that the first part of the sequence is nothing but an R point of the local Hecker stack. The only additional information is uh, uh, this final isomorphism um, E0 um, isomorphic to the sigma pullback of the initial twister um, EN. So, um, so just by the definition, we can see there's a natural morphism from the moduli of local Stuka to the local hacker stack just by forgetting the final isomorphism. So um, as before, we can define this rectangle of uh, this rectangle version of the moduli of local Stuka, and um, um, and also um, we can define its uh, finite type um, quotients um, for the sake of uh, applying the analytic um, formalism. So um, I will um, briefly introduce the cohomological correspondences as I promised before. So um, just in this slide, I will assume K to be some perfect field of a characteristic P greater than zero and all the stacks will be algebraic stacks, um, which are nice. Um, so um, for two stacks, X1 and X2, and if I be an object in the derived category of uh, sheaves on Xi with lambda coefficient, a cohomological correspondence is a pair C of U. Um, so where C is a stack that admits a map to X1 cross X2, where U is a morphism between um, the pullback of F1 along the first map C1 to the shrink pullback of F2 along the second map um, C2. And we just denote the space of a cohomological correspondences by core X1, F1, X2, X2. X to Ft. And that just by definition, we see that this correspondence space is nothing but the home space between C1 star of F1 and the C2 shriek of F2 in the category of, uh, uh, in the derived category of sheaves on um, C. Um, so there's, uh, so the key step towards proving, um, uh, towards constructing this geometric check here, the transfer is as follows. Um, <clears throat> So let's say we have a representation of G hat lambda. The geometric stack equivalence um, tells us that we can send V to some L plus G equivalent perverse sheaves on the F ingress manion. And um, the L plus G equivalency allows us to do some descent argument and um, get a perverse sheaf on the local hacker stack. And we can pull back this um, perverse sheaf along the natural forgettable morphism um, to get a perverse sheaf on at the moduli of local Stuka. And I will write this resulting perverse sheaf as S E2. So I will further given, uh, I will further write the support of this perverse sheaf um, as Stuka of uh, V log M. And just log M is just some choice of uh, um, integers um, to ensure that this is really a finite type version of the moduli of local Stuka. And, um, um, we can similarly define the rectangle version as uh, V vertical line W uh, log n prime n prime. Okay, so the, the key theorem towards proving uh, towards constructing this geometry Jackie Lyons transfer is as follows. So let's say um, we have two um, representations v1 and v2 of the Lyons view group G hat, which are projective lambda modules. And um, just for technical reasons, we need to choose a quadruple of integers m1 n1 and M to N2, and also a dominant co-character lambda. So we can consider this hacker correspondence of modular of local Stuka. Um, so recall that, um, uh, so this stack is, oops, I need to use this color, it's more visible. So this stack is nothing but uh, like a rectangle of uh, G-twisters um, limited by modifications. Well, this HV1 left, <coughs> left arrow is really mapping um, um, it's really mapping this rectangle to um, the upper row. Well, um, this HV2 um, red arrow is um, maps this rectangle to the lower arrow, uh, to, the, to the lower edge. And then um, there exists 
um, a map as a v1, v2 from the space, from the home space of coherent sheaves v1 tude and v2 tude on this stack of Lalas parameters to the space of cohomological correspondences supported on this um, hacker correspondence of modular life local Stuka. And this map as v1 and v2 is really independent of our choice of this integers m1, n1, m2, n2, and dominant co-characters um, lambda. Um, so a few words of this is, um, so we can think of this as v1, v2 as an analog of Vincent LaFerx as operators. And, uh, um, um, and, and um, the idea of, a, of a constructing such map is really by looking at the categorical trace of the geometry type equivalence. Um, but the detailed construction is um, kind of a technical analogist um, omit the discussion. Mm. Uh, Um, so again, um, in the case of a QL bar, these operators were constructed by Xiang Zhu. And um, 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 in our case, um, the, the operators are actually constructed in a slightly different, in, in a different way, but I think the idea is still by studying the categorical trace of the uh, Sadaki equivalents. Okay, um, so I think this ends my um, talk and I want to thank you for um, attending the talk. Thank you. Any questions? I saw Jordi asked a couple in the chat. Oh, okay. Let me see. Maybe I can. I think oh, everyone can't see the oh. thing I asked in the chat. So, one question is um, when. So, I know that the stalks, the IC stalks over Q. Are the same on the width vector affine Grassmannian as on the um, equal characteristic one. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if there's any kind of concrete thing known that there's a kind of genuine ge geometric difference. Uh, yes, this is actually a very, this is very, very good and a very hard question. Uh, I thought about it, but uh, but I don't have like a very good um, answer to this question. <laughs> Oh, maybe so just the second question was you had this totally ramified extension f of o uh -huh. and i didn't see where it came up um right this is a totally ramified extension um right this is just used in the study of the um, geometric properties of the vita vector up and so um right You're muted. Jordi, you're muted. Sorry. What do you mean by that? Um, so how do you use it? And be, so did it did it show up in, on any subsequent slides? No, it, it actually didn't. It's just a, it didn't show up in any subsequent slides. It's just, I, I just okay. I, I just mentioned it because for um, to just to set up the, the basic settings. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. There's no other questions. Uh, oh, how... I see there's a question from uh, Zhu Zhu Hong. It, is it known as the locus of either is uh, sugar cell? Um, I was going to answer this question. Oh, it seems that Daniel Zhu is going to answer this question live. Daniel, do you want to answer this question? I, uh, I I thought uh, I could answer by writing, but I can also answer already. But um, so I know the equal characteristic case, but I think it's not true uh, that the smooth locus of uh, ah yeah sorry so for for v Schubert varieties. So in the equal characteristic case, it's not true. So I don't know if you want to 
I think it is true, Danielle, for for the for the geo orbits. For the smooth G locus is exactly the, the yes, yes, it is. Yeah. So yeah, what what is it different for bit what varieties? Pardon me. What, 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 what's the question? Um, yeah. So for for equal characteristic for G or for O orbits, it is true. Yes. Yeah, it is true. Yes. Yes. So I I want to ask. So uh, um, does derive Geometric satake also work in the mixed characteristic case, or is that uh, hard? We don't know. I think it's pretty hard. Yeah. So as far as I'm, as far as I know, um, there's, to my knowledge, there's no, so far there's no um, progress towards establishing the derived geometric satake in mixed characteristic case. So one difficulty of this is probably due to um, there's no uh, mixed characteristic analog of Gaiskeri's central functor because um, in Gaiskeri's construction he really used the global Alfangers menu, while um, without using um, the um, perfect total machinery uh, we can produce this global Alfangers menu in mixed characteristic and. Um, um, as far as I know, there's no mixed characteristic version of this central functor. So there's no central functor even with these diamond considerations? Uh, that doesn't... I'm not sure if Peter has, Peter um, wrote it in, in his upcoming work. That I'm not sure. One more question. Um, so in Shin Wen's proof. Um, so a really difficult aspect is the commutativity, right? And he uses this beautiful trick of um, using the Lustig Yun minus Q analog, of, right? And I was wondering what are the extra steps involved in establishing commutativity in your setting? Oh, okay. Yes, this is, this is a great question. So yes, as you mentioned, that a community establishing the commutativity concern is uh, one of the most difficult difficult part in um, Simon's work. Um, but here I'm a little bit, uh, actually say I'm a little bit lucky because in this case, the, um, let me refer to that, oops, let me refer to that slide. Um, so this Hopf algebra uh, with an antipode is uh, called B lambda. Um, right, so this B lambda, if you take lambda equals to um, ZL, it injectively maps to BQL bar. So, uh, the so the, the <clears throat> so the multiplication of a BQL bar is commutative by uh, Simon's construction of the commutativity constraint. So I sort of get this community the commutativity of the multiplication of a BZL uh, for free. So this is uh, how I produce this. So actually, um, in in this case, in the integral case, this is actually in some sense easier than the QL bar case. Any other questions? Okay, then let's thank the speaker again.